artist Doug Pexa here. This is the time-lapse version of this painting. I am putting out a full length. It's 20 plus, 25 plus minutes, give or take a little bit. Watch that if you want to watch me actually paint in real time. It's real time. And it has an unabridged version of the commentary on this one. So, if you want to watch that, watch that. Tell me if you like the full format or if you like the uh, short version instead. But here's the short version. Today I am painting what is called an Amanita by Sporagera. Um, it's also known as a destroying angel. It's a mushroom that grows both in Europe and uh, here in North America. Uh, there's a couple different varieties of them, very similarly related, uh, different Latin names, but uh, this is the one that I know is around me. It is highly poisonous, very toxic, as the name would suggest. It's a cool mushroom, it's a beautiful mushroom. I'm painting in white right here. Uh, Destroying angels are a white mushroom. So uh, painting white things can be challenging. To get them really to feel like they have volume, you do need to uh, use color in your white. Yellows, browns, blues, purples even, uh, to give cool and warm light effects to it. Shadow is gonna be cool, blue, purples. So as I was putting some more red in the uh, background, I, I kind of didn't like the contrast. So adding contrast, you can see how, how the whiteness, even the bluish white, really starts to, to pop that mushroom from its negative space. Uh, and again, going slowly to correct the edges, refine the edges. Uh, and sometimes you even want to blend into an edge if, if something's in the background or what have you. But you can see I'm just kind of scatting over, over the background so I can see some of that red in the background as I paint. Um, it might not be obvious all the time to the viewer, but it informs, think about the the negative space when you're painting um, the whole time you're painting, not just as an afterthought, uh, going into some of that darkness, refining that edge. Clean the brush off, but you don't always have to clean the brush perfectly because that will inform color choices, especially if it's similar colors. Even if you're darkening it, that yellow can get into there, helping kind of pull out some greens. Take time to look at the painting as you paint it. I wanted to kind of pull in kind of a foresty vibe greens and, and the like. I like to play with the lines that kind of lead the eye around. Now those lines, kind of that grassy stick vibe, you can see how much that's pushing, pushing that green back, kind of like the radial blur of a, a DSL camera. So right here I'm just helping that underside look still white, but it's cool white. It's a, it's a blue. And that really, really makes the cap look like it's getting all the light. Uh, a little darkness where the uh, veil and stem connect to the bottom there. And using that same blue to help give the mushroom stem and that veil a 3D vibe to it. And then again, using the same color, 
sometimes darker, sometimes lighter, uh, to get that egg more round. You don't have to have every detail in a painting, but suggest of details. Like just a little bit of lighter white paint, maybe with a little blue in it to get those gills just suggested. The suggestion goes a long way. There it is. On the coaster. When you're done, sign it. I hope you liked this video. Please, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, subscribe if you want, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. I'm going to be finishing up uh, part two of uh, how to be a better dot 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 artist, writer, songwriter, blah 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 soon. So stick around for that. Cheers.